Chapter 446 to 447. I know the name of his Manjikyu Sharingan Dojitsu because my Manjikyu Sharingan Dojitsu is also Kemui, said Kakashi with a bit of hesitation. Guy asked in shock. Does that mean you were also able to make yourself intangible using that dojitsu? Kakashi shook his head. No, the dojitsu is similar and has the same name, but there are few key differences. Itachi has also known that Kakashi's left eye is Manjiku Sharingan, but he had to act ignorant here, else it could prove to be troublesome in the future. So he asked with a surprised tone, Kakashi-san, the Sharingan in your left eye was a Manjiku Sharingan? Kakashi nodded lightly. The surprise on Itachi's face deepened, and he asked something that was genuinely his doubt. I heard that you had transplanted a Tutomo Sharingan. Is it possible that you awakened the Manjiku Sharingan on your own? And if you did, then when and how did you awaken it? Kakashi said, I don't know either. How and when did the Tutomo Sharingan in his left eye turn into a Manjiku Sharingan? Kakashi himself is not very much sure, or maybe that's just an excuse because he did not want to bring up that matter. It was probably at the time when I killed Rin. But Kakashi isn't sure how to mention this. Itachi did not pursue the matter, just sighed slightly. A non-Achiha can awaken Manjiku Sharingan from a Tutomo Sharingan. This is simply unbelievable. It really is, but it is also shown how impactful the death of Rin was on Kakashi. Thought Kuroto, then asked, Kakashi, did you use this Kamui in your fight against Tobi? Kakashi nodded. Yes, the situation was extremely critical at that time. Tobi was also using his jutsu upon me. So, I figured that I would die regardless of anything I did, therefore, I decided to use Kamui in order to kill Tobi along with myself. But unexpectedly, we both teleported from Kanoha to a different dimension. A different dimension? Shursue muttered as he tried to analyze Kamui. So he travels to a different dimension in order to prevent the attacks on himself? My guess is exactly the same as yours. The dimension connected by Kamui is the key secret to his intangibility. Whenever he chooses, he can transfer himself into that dimension to avoid any damage. After a pause, Kakashi asked again, Shursue, in the Uchiha clan, has there ever been a precedent where two different pairs of Manjiku Sharingan awaken the same dojitsu? Kakashi needs an answer to this question more than anything in order to maintain his sanity because he has come to realize something after realizing the secret of Kamui, and Kakashi doesn't want his guess to be true. The masked Tobi who attacked him happened to reveal the Sharingan in his right eye, while Kakashi coincidentally had the Sharingan in the right eye. Coincidentally enough, it happened to be a Manjiku Sharingan of the same pattern, and also had the same or similar Dojitsu Kamui. One coincidence may not explain much, but three different coincidences. Each one pointing towards the same conclusion made Kakashi feel uneasy. Listening to Kakashi's question, Shursue thought about it, used his understanding of the Manjiku Sharingan, the information and analysis of Manjiku Sharingan that Kuroto had given him about the Manjiku Sharingan and Dojitsu, as well as the information about the various records left within the Uchiha clan. And finally, he said, As far as I understand, an Uchiha awakens the Manjiku Sharingan when he goes through an intense emotional turmoil that is akin to despair or probably a similar. Emotional turmoil, the deeper the emotional turmoil, the stronger and freakier dojitsu he awakens. The dojitsu he awakens with the Manjiku Sharingan is related to the kind of emotion, or probably desire. Or to be more exact the thought he has at the time of awakening Manjiku Sharingan. In a way, it can be said that Manjiku Sharingan responds to the deepest desire within the heart of the awakener at the moment of awakening and give birth to corresponding abilities in the form of dojitsu. Each dojitsu is different from the other because the thoughts of each individual are different from the other person at the moment of awakening. Even if the thoughts are quite similar, they won't be the same. Theoretically speaking, two different pairs of Manjiku Sharingan can have the same or similar dojitsu, so it's possible that two different pairs of Manjiku Sharingan can have the same dojitsu that is Kamui and Kakashi-san in Tobi's case, but the chances of both of them leading to the same dimension are very low very very low unless there is some connection between the two. Kuroto also groaned but did not speak. As Shursue has said, it is entirely possible to awaken the same dojitsu. Itachi and Sasuke in the canon are perfect examples. Both Itachi and Sasuke awakened Amaterasu, but Kuroto is not sure if it is also attributed to the transcription seal. After all, Itachi sealed Amaterasu in Sasuke's left eye, and coincidentally enough, Sasuke awakened Amaterasu in his left eye. Secondly, both Sasuke and Itachi are brothers, so that might as well be one of the possible causes. And thirdly, Amaterasu is relatively ordinary when compared to Kamui. Even Naidame Hokage stated that he has previously seen Amaterasu, although it was not as powerful as Sasuke's. These words of Naidame Hokage clearly indicate that Amaterasu must have appeared even before Itachi and Sasuke, but no one had previously seen or heard of Kamui. Listening to Shursue's analysis, Kakashi swallowed deeply. Although Shursue did not say it explicitly, his words do indicate that the Sharingan that was with Kakashi and the Sharingan that is with Tobi is somehow connected. And there is no doubt that Kakashi has already a guess in his heart, but Kakashi does not want to believe that his guess is true. Shursue asked at this moment, Kakashi-san? Other than us of the Team Eleven, 
Did anyone else know about your Manjiku Sharingan prior to this incident? Kakashi shook his head. No one currently alive. Kakashi himself has never disclosed the secret of his Manjiku Sharingan to anyone. Not even to Sandame Hokage. So, all those who had known about his Manjiku Sharingan are already present in this ward. Shursue then glanced at Guy, who also shook his head. I have never mentioned it to anyone. Receiving a positive reply, Shursue said with a confused tone. So, if none of us revealed the information about Kakashi-san's Manjiku Sharingan, then how did Akatsuki come to know about it? Toby must have known that you have the Manjiku Sharingan because if he wanted the Sharingan, then he did not need to specifically target you. There are so many Uchiha with three Tomo Sharingan he could have taken it from anyone there similar to how he did with Uchiha Haragi a few years ago. Guy asked, Could it be because of your presence Shursue? Shursue pointed at himself. Because of me? But, if he can travel to and fro from a special dimension, he didn't need to be afraid of me. Not to mention with how Kakashi-san was attacked. It seemed as if Toby was specifically aware that Kakashi-san occasionally visits Kanoha Cemetery. The attack pattern clearly shows that he is quite familiar with Kakashi-san's habits. Kakashi's face turned gloomier. This was another point that pointed toward what Kakashi fears the most. At this point, Itachi suddenly asked, Kakashi-san, if I remember correctly, the Sharingan of your left I was a gift from Uchiha Abito, right? Kakashi nodded. Yes, Abito is a war hero, he sacrificed himself and just prior to his death, he gave me his Sharingan, so that I can see the world for the both of us. How Kakashi spoke reflected that he is desperately trying to convince himself against all facts. Kuroto could only shake his head as he looked at Kakashi's desperation. Itachi then said with a calm tone, Same dojitsu your left eye and his right eye. Even if we assume that he is an Abito-san, his right eye is very likely to be Uchiha Abito's, that he managed to obtain somehow. Shursue suddenly said, So does that mean he wanted to take away Kakashi-san's eye in order to make a pair? This way he will be able to use Susanoo too? Mike Guy suddenly asked in a low tone, Kakashi, you don't think it's Abito, right? Kakashi gulped. What he feared most has been spoken. But knowing full well that Guy's guess is most likely correct, Kakashi berated him in a stern tone. I said that Abito sacrificed himself. He is a war hero. He wanted to be Hokage. He valued his friends and comrades over everything, even his own life. He is the one who taught me the importance of comrades. He would never become an evil person and join the likes of Akatsuki who intends to destroy this world. Toby has to be someone else who managed to get his hands on Abito's right eye and somehow managed to awaken the Manjiku Sharingan. So, we both may have similar dojitsu. This was not a denial to Guy, but himself, but even then, Kakashi's words are somewhat persuasive. If a non-Achiha can awaken Manjiku Sharingan, then certainly Toby, who could possibly be an unknown missing Achiha can also awaken the Manjiku Sharingan, so it's not impossible that both have a similar dojitsu. But Guy's next words completely shattered through Kakashi's persuasive shell. Then why did he not kill you before he left? Kakashi couldn't answer, because he knows that no amount of reason or persuasion could answer this question. If Toby is an Uchiha Bito, then why does an evil criminal like him, who did not hesitate to kill countless shinobi at aim, almost incited civil war within Kanoha by capturing and nearly killing Uzumaki Naruto, not kill you immediately after he had taken the Sharingan? Why did he leave you alive with the possibility that you can be saved? If this would have happened in a deserted place, then it would seem reasonable because no one could find you, and you'd have died without a doubt. But it happened in Kanoha, so he should have definitely considered the possibility that someone would eventually find you, and you are likely to not die, even then he still left you knowing full well that the intelligence about Kamui can be leaked through you, not to mention that he even knew about you learning flying Raijin which could turn out to be problematic for Akatsuki, and yet he did not finish you off why. Guy asked again while pointing out all the facts to light. I he, faced with Guy's question, and the facts that Guy brought to light, Kakashi couldn't answer, because he knows that there is only one answer to this question. And in his heart, Kakashi knows the answer, more so because of those words that have been constantly resounding in his heart. If you don't show me anything worth it, I shall reflect the light on the moon and cover this accursed reality in infinite Tsukuyami for all eternity. But Kakashi doesn't yet understand the meaning of these words. At this time, Kuroto said to Guy, Guy, let's not put too much pressure on Kakashi. He is seriously injured and needs to recuperate. Putting too much pressure on him wouldn't be good. Kakashi needs time to collect his thoughts, and I think we should give him that time. Kuroto could see the struggle in Kakashi's heart, which is why he did not say anything to break that shell of Kakashi. After all, Kuroto can be sure that Kakashi too has come to realize it, but just isn't ready to face it. Besides, even if the identity of Tobi to be Abito is revealed, it would change nothing in the broad sense. After all, Naruto is far from mastering his talk no jutsu to god level, so no one can change Abito's determination for Project Tsukinomi. And there is no one left in the village to whom Abito is attached. His only grandmother had been dead for a few years now. Even the last bond with Kakashi was also cut when he took back the Sharingan. So, at this point, revealing Tobi's true identity wouldn't do any good. 
and only put more pressure on Kanoha and give an excuse to other shinobi villages to target Kanoha and the Uchiha clan. Listening to Kuroto's words, Guy, Itachi, and Shursue nodded. They too can see the struggle in Kakashi's heart, and since the current Kakashi spirit is extremely sluggish and tired, so they too understood that it's not the right time to delve into the true identity of the attacker. So, after some more casual talk with Kakashi, the four of them left the ward. And after bidding farewell to Guy at the hospital gate, Kuroto Shursue and Itachi too proceeded towards their home, and on the way home, Kuroto can't help but think about the reason why Abito went as far as to take back his left Sharingan. Why did Abito do this? This question is quite reasonable because Kuroto thinks that unless something extreme happens, Abito wouldn't bother taking back his left eye from Kakashi. No one knows of this fact better than him, therefore, he feels a bit overwhelmed, and to be honest caught off guard. He had expected everything and made a lot of calculations, but he did not even take into account the possibility that Abito would take back his left Sharingan. Was it because of his defeat against Tsukihai at the Mizukage building? Was a momentary thought, and it seemed reasonable enough. In the canon, the reason why Abito never bothered to take back his left eye from Kakashi was that after the death of Yandame Hokage in the aftermath of the Kyubi's chaos, there was no one who could actually threaten him in the entire shinobi world. At least not until the fourth great shinobi war started when he was slightly coerced by Kabuto, who had somehow found the remains of Uchiha Madara and used the forbidden jutsu. Edo Tensei to reanimate Madara into the shinobi world. Therefore, Abito was left with no choice but to agree to Kabuto's proposal. Not to mention, by the time the fourth great shinobi war started, Akatsuki had already captured seven of the nine bijou, so even then Abito did not bother taking back his left eye. In addition to taking into account his past fetters with Kakashi, it was also because there was not much need. After all, with just the Kamui of his right Manjiku Sharingan, Abito was capable of controlling the entire shinobi world in the palm of his hand, well except for a few deviations that mostly involved the existence of Uzumaki Naruto. But this is not the case in this time and space. The existence of Amitsukami is a very big variable to which Abito has yet to find even the slightest of hints that might lead to a possible solution. When Abito realized that Yama, the leader of Amitsukami, actually possessed terrifying power that could rival the Rinnegan, he was obviously shocked and uneasy. The calmness he had when dealing with the first iteration of Akatsuki, and even at the time of conspiring against Yandame Hokage and Kanoha naturally disappeared. And what really drove Abito to make up his mind should have been the battle against Homosubi in the Mizukage building, at least Kuroto thinks so. If he had lost to the leader of Amitsukami, Abito might have been able to grudgingly accept it. But at the Mizukage building, he was fooled by Homosubi and lost to her who is probably not even the second strongest member in Amitsukami. So Abito obviously couldn't accept this fact. Without the necessary strength, collecting all the nine bijou will be close to impossible, and Project Tsukinomi will obviously never be completed if he can't even collect the nine bijou. And compared to Project Tsukinomi, the bond with Kakashi is not so important. Okay, maybe it is important, but that is probably the only reason why he did not finish off Kakashi, but still, the fact that Abito took back his left eye really caught Kuroto off guard. Damn it, the plot has changed so much that I cannot judge anything. Even the characters and thinking process of others cannot be judged by using my knowledge of the canon. I should have known that this would happen eventually, and I should have taken the Sharingan in Kakashi's eye, or even if not taken it, I should have at least made Shursue seal Koto Amitsukami in Kakashi Sharingan, or maybe made Itachi seal Amaterasu in Kakashi Sharingan. This way the threat of Abito would have been neutralized. Kuroto sighed. Abito with just the right eye is still within the scope that can be dealt with, even if killing him is extremely difficult, he could still be fought against. After all, in order for him to attack someone, he must first manifest himself in close proximity to the target, to be able to touch him, and once he manifests closer to the target, it is possible for him to reveal flaws that can be utilized, and even if he doesn't reveal flaws, the target himself can act as bait in order to lead Abito into a trap, just like Tsukihai did at the Mizukage building. But after Abito has gained both the left and the right eye, not to mention being able to use Susanoo, that too can use Kamui, Kamui Shuriken, and who knows what other powers, just the long-range version of Kamui of the left eye alone is a one-hit kill attack dodging which is almost close to impossible because his attacks cannot be predicted, and even if they can be predicted, specifically what he is targeting cannot be predicted. Just imagine, a guy hiding somewhere in a dark corner, hundreds of meters away from you, he just stares at you, and you are done for. Who will not be fearful of him? And unlike Kakashi who is limited by his chakra, Abito the original owner of the eye can spam Kamui without any worry of chakra or exhaustion. After all, he has Hashirama cells transplanted into him. Even thinking of this possibility, Kuroto can't help but feel stressed. Ever since the War of Summit at Amigekure, things have started to get out of his control. One by one, everything is changing drastically and Kuroto has been unable to keep up with the changes. This is probably fate's mockery, and I am still too weak to be able to completely resist it, thought Kuroto while clenching his hands. At this time, Itachi asked telepathically, Kuroto-san, if this person of Akatsuki really has both the eyes of Uchiha Abito, won't he be able to use Susanoo too? Shursue continued with a solemn expression. And he can even use with style, probably because he has the cells of Shodame-sama transplanted into him. 
Kuroto rubbed his temple in stress, even though he fears when he thinks about it. After all, Abito Susanoo is something that can not only interfere in the battle against Atsutsuki Kagaya but even injure her. Itachi then asked, how should we respond to this? For Itachi, Sharingan or Manjiku Sharingan are not very important, different from other Uchiha. Itachi does not care too much if the Kekiai Genkai of the Uchiha clan falls in the hands of others. As long as someone can use it, they can obviously have it, and if they use formal means to get their hands on the Sharingan then all the better. But what Itachi can't accept is the fact that someone using the Kekiai Genkai of the Uchiha clan to cause harm to the village, Shinobi world, and the Uchiha clan. For Itachi, the existence of Shinichi is still acceptable because Itachi has made a lot of guesses about why Shinichi is in Akatsuki, but the existence of this Tobi fellow is unacceptable even for him. This is why Itachi is quite eager and really wants to get rid of Tobi. Shursue also looked at Kuroto with an expectant look these days whenever he encounters trouble that cannot be solved no matter how he thinks about it. He would subconsciously look at Kuroto, hoping for some kind of solution, and this is why Shursue really feels that he has grown dependent on Kuroto. After pondering a little, Kuroto said, I do have an idea that might prove effective on Tobi, but to find that solution I need more information, and the most likely source of obtaining that information is the ancient scrolls of the Uchiha clan. Itachi replied, most of the scrolls that record the secrets of the Uchiha clan are probably in the hands of Otosama, so obtaining them will be an extremely difficult task without alerting him, however, the stone tablet at the Naka Shrine is accessible if it is of any use in finding the information. Shursue then nodded and said, If I remember correctly, there are a few ancient scrolls hidden at the Naka Shrine too. They might prove to be useful. Itachi nodded yes, although those scrolls at the Naka Shrine mostly record the millennium year history of the Uchiha clan, not anything related to secret jutsu or kenjutsu we can go through them, and maybe we will find what you are looking for in them. Kuroto nodded. All right, we will go to Naka Shrine tonight. While Kuroto, Shursue, and Itachi discussed their further actions, a group of people walked in their direction from the opposite side. This is naturally the Odogekure team, being guided by Anko as per the mission assigned to her. As soon as Anko saw Kuroto, she quickly waved her hand and greeted him. Kuroto, what are you doing at Kanoha Hospital at this hour? Kuroto stopped his discussion with Shursue and Itachi, then nodded towards Anko and said with a smile, Something came up so I had to visit Kanoha Hospital. It's nothing too big. What about you Anko-chan? Still guiding the Odogekure team? As soon as she heard Kuroto's question, Anko nodded with an annoyed expression then walked a little closer and whispered. I am telling you Kuroto, this Odogekure team is such a pain in the ass that I would much rather dump them in pits and feed them all to my snakes rather than having them escort them all over Kanoha. If it wasn't a mission, I would definitely kick them away right this instant. It's obviously getting so late yet they don't want to stay at the assigned guest house and have to visit Kanoha's night market. They have been annoying the hell out of me. Although the volume of Anko's whisper was low, her words were still heard by everyone. Shursue and Itachi felt awkward upon listening to Anko. Kuroto chuckled and didn't care too much about what Anko said. Obviously, he understands Anko's character and knows full well that she has deliberately said this to make the Odogekure team embarrassed. Since this girl has walked out of Orochimaru's shadow, she has become more and more unruly doesn't care about what others think and speak, nor does she shy away from embarrassing others. While Kuroto and Anko were talking to each other, Kimamaro looked at Kuroto and his indifferent expression changed slightly. His expression was clearly hostile towards Kuroto. In Kimamaro's opinion, Hyuga Kuroto has betrayed Orochimaru-sama, so he is a traitor, and traitors must be eliminated. Haku who was standing at the end of the team also glanced at Kuroto, then immediately lowered his head. He felt guilt for leaving with Kabuto without even informing Kuroto. The disguised Orochimaru's gaze crossed Kuroto and then fell on Shursue and Itachi standing behind Kuroto. Both of them are the Uchiha whose bodies have been coveted by him for a very long time but he has never been able to obtain their bodies. Thinking something, Orochimaru gave Tenzo signal, who was standing next to him. Tenzo obviously understood Orochimaru's instruction, and after coughing slightly, he said to Anko, Ano Mitarashi-san, is there a restroom nearby? Anko frowned upon hearing Tenzo's question, didn't you go to the restroom a few minutes ago? Ugh. Tenzo was embarrassed, then said with a panicked tone, I, I have to go again, or something bad will happen. Okay, okay, don't cry, I will take you, said Anko with a sigh. Then she turned towards Kuroto and said, Kuroto keep them accompanied for a while until I come back, to which Kuroto nodded. Then Anko led Tenzo to the nearby restroom all while muttering, So young, and your kidney is already failing? It's a real pity.